All right, we just did all that, but my microphone wasn't working, so no. deal with it. So the table on page 444 shows the cost of U.S. dollars for different items purchased in Russia and the equivalent terms at the average American income. So this shows like how much of a hole in your wallet it puts, relatively speaking. Okay, uh, here's a good way to put it. If you can jump so high on Earth, okay, that means you can jump proportionally higher on the moon, let's say. Okay? Yes, gravity's less there. Okay. So, or if you just try to hop, let's say not jump, but hop, um, if you try to hop a little bit, it'll be that much proportionally more on the moon. Okay, for this one, it's going to be proportionally more on your wallet. For example, it says here, if you purchase blue jeans, if you purchase blue jeans on, on Mars, if you pur purchase blue jeans, Russian cost in American dollars is 48 bucks. Okay, Russian is 48 bucks. What it would put in the hole in your wallet in the U.S. equivalent, 958 dollars and 56 cents. So that just means that's how much of the paycheck a month would be taken for a single pair of jeans. Another one is a fast food burger, two dollars and eight cents here. But if it would be, if we would make the average the same as if it were in Russia, it would be a 41 dollars and 53 cents. I doubt obesity would be a big issue there. So we're going to talk about this. What is the U.S. equivalent cost for a bottle of aspirin if it costs six hundred? Sorry, six dollars and seventy-two cents. So what would the relative cost be? What would the relative cost be? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to set it up like this. Setting up your proportion is going to be the biggest part to help you answer these questions correct. You want to have one concept on one side of your equal sign, another concept on the other. Sometimes it's going to be a unit of measure. Sometimes it's going to be the country that we're talking about. But that's going to be the biggest deal, and that's the only new part about what we're doing today. So I want you to create a proportion. And you are going to do Russia's flag is also red, white, and blue. So I'm doing Russia as blue. And the United States has red as our first color. So guess what? Now it tells us, it tells us what the equivalent of the Russian average and the American average is. So Russian is $110, right? That's what their average monthly income is or at least according to the stat from 2002. And the U.S. is 2,197. You see how we have the USA on the right side? Because that's what it would be in the U.S. Now it's asking us if it costs $6.72 in Russia, where is it going to go? Is it going to go below the Russian side or the USA side? Okay. Russian side. You see how when we laid it out, it is so clear as to where we need to go? 672 cents, 6.72. And it's asking us, what is the U.S. equivalent cost? So this one, when we're like little John, we're like, what? We put X. <laughs> Actually, yeah. Now, we are going to do the cross products. Now, cross products is the new concept of today. And a product is what? Yes. Answer to a multiplication problem. So I'm going to make a cross or an X. And I'm going to find the product of those two. So I'm going to do 110X equals 2,000. 197 multiplied by 6.72. 6.72. Yep, so we are going to now go over here. I can get rid of that, good. 
and do that product. Get out of there. So I'm going to go over here and do that. And I want you to do 2,197 times 6.72, which you have been able to do for a year. Do not wait for me to do it. We're going to be doing it simultaneously, OK? Of course, remember you to stack them on top of each other, ignore the decimal point, bring that many decimal points back into the back at the end. Is this a Phantom 7 that showed up for some reason? Is anybody else done? They could Oh, there we go. That's where I messed up. Six, three. Yeah, it's six. There. All right. So now we have this one here, and you're you're stopping talking right now. I have one, four, seven, six, three, point eight, four. We're not done yet, though. Look, we have 110x when we have to solve for x. So we still have to do some division. So I have to do the inverse of 110x. So I have to divide by 110. And we're off again. 
divided by 110. So I have that number. Because this is stuff that you know how to do, so we can be sure to do it. So go ahead and have fun with this one, everyone. Go. You should stop talking right now. I got X equals 134.22. Yes, sir. Right, but what are we are we dealing with American money here? How many decimals does that go to? As soon as I got to this point, right there, and I realized, shh, stop. That little bit right there is a the reason that four parents at parent teacher conferences said, I'd like to listen or I'd like to hear what's going on, but I wouldn't be able to focus because every two seconds or every every time there's a distraction. Keep your mouth shut. If you have a question, raise your hand. Is that clear? I got to this 740, and I knew that that was going to be a number higher than 4, so that was going to make this single cent round up. Okay? We only deal with two decimals when we're dealing with money unless you're the fuel industry, or as people often call it, gas. But that is a sate of a solid, whereas a liquid is fuel for your car. So it's $134.22 for a bottle of aspirin yep. to get back to what we're doing. Okay, gotcha. No, that's because we round to the nearest cent because this is 25 cents, not 25.0 cents. Okay. $134.22 for a bottle. Right, that is... That's that's high. That would be a lot of money. So that's relative. So how much how much it hurts the pocket of a the average income uh, Russian citizen compared to how much it would hurt our pocket with uh, the average American making two thousand one hundred. Okay, the blueprints for a room. Ah, we're running out of time already. The blueprints for a room. All we're gonna do. Yeah, we're going to do this one as well. This one's easier. Eh. Mm. Yeah. The blueprints for a room show a house that is 2 and 5 twelfths inches long. The key for the blueprints says that one quarter of an inch on the blueprints represents 18 inches on the house. How long is the actual room? So here's the two. What two things are we dealing with here? What two things? Remember the first one was the Russian income and the other one's the American income. <clears throat> Excuse me. What two things are we dealing with here? Mm, geez. 
hiccups ish. Yeah. Beautiful blueprints. And actual house. So I'm going to do what I'm going to do every time first for the second and third sections of our homework, which is make a proportion. Blueprints, house. Now the best way to do this is, see how this is an underline right here and this is an underline right here? You write down the known information right away, the known information where you're directly comparing two things. The blueprints, it says right here, blueprints, one quarter inch. So blueprints, one quarter inch. And I'm doing a, like a sideways fraction bar, so you don't think it's just like a whole bunch of lines with numbers between them. Um, can we try and do a decimal? Uh, let's keep fractions fractions. Then we have the house represents 18 inches. Now, what other piece of information do we have? Is it going the blueprint side or the house side? Jamaica, what do you think? Yeah, what do you believe to be the true answer? Not necessarily what you think. What's the answer to that question? I said, uh, what we, have, we need a piece of information. The information is either going to go in this spot or this spot. So we need to see, do we have more information about the blueprint or the house? What do we got? About the house? So... A house has a room that's two and a half, almost two and a half inches long? No, 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 it's not. It's, it's the blueprint that we have information on. Yeah. It's, it's like if you step two inches to your left, you'll be in the living room. Whoop, nope, sorry, your pet went too far. That's the dining room. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so funny. Okay. I'm going to find the cross products. So that means I need to multiply those two things. So I'm going to set it up, set it up. <coughs> Salud. We have 1 fourth x equals 18 multiplied by 2 and 5 twelfths. Brought to you by Scott Smith's math class. Pre-algebra. Man, this is tough. A voice, voice over acting. So now I'm going to go over here and I'm going to multiply these guys. I have 18 over 1 multiplied by 12 times 2 is 24 plus 5 is 29 twelfths. This will be the point where a lot of people are going to be like, I need to find the common denominator. No. But you can cross cancel. Ah, there it is. But I am going to cross cancel. So what I'm going to do is I recognize that I can take a 6 out of the 18 and a 6 out of the 12. I'm going to zoom in here so everybody can see what we're doing. Here. And this is, a type of, this is the type of stuff that for those of you that were struggling to finish stuff on time, you are forgetting about this trick to make it quicker. You have that information, or you possibly just chose not to record it in your um, notebook. Or, or brain. No, I... Binder. So we have 29 times 3, quiet, is going to be 3 less than 90. So 87 divided by 2 is going to be uh, just one short of 44 on the numerator. So that would be 43 and a half. Forty-three and one half. Correct. That is no. Now we have 
to get x by itself. Do you guys agree that 1 fourth x is the same thing as x divided by 4? Yes. yes. Good. Yes. That is correct. So YouTube just knows how smart you guys are because you see sign language, so everybody has the right, an right answer. Okay. Now I have to undo what's being done to the variable, or in other words, use the inverse operation of being divided by 4, which is multiplying by 4. So now I have x. See how this, none of this stuff is new? The only new thing that we're doing today is setting up the proportion. So 43 and a half multiplied by 4 is the same thing as... I'll just, I'll just make it an improper fraction again. So we have 87. Yep, that's right. 87 halves multiplied by 4 over 1. I can cancel that with 2. Cancel that with 2. 87 over 1 multiplied by 2 over 1. So 87 times 2 is just 176. So I'm going to rewrite this down here. X equals 176. But that's not my answer. Because it's a... If there's words in the question, there's got to be words in the answer. Beautiful. So we have the actual room is 176 inches. And I could put that into feet. Long. Good. I could put that into feet, but we're going to move along. Okay, we're, all we're going to do for the next couple is we're just going to set it up. Okay, we're going to just set it up because that's the hard part. That's the thing that you guys need to recognize because you've done everything else that we just did. Okay, for example, we've done uh, yellow. We've done multiplying fractions a whole bunch. Yes, yes. yes. We've done multiplying decimals a whole bunch, right? Yes. But we have not done a whole lot of setting up setting up the, uh, the proportion. This was kind of set up for you. I spent time to have this different than the other classes because it didn't make sense. And then I was like, oh, it's from the book. In simple cameras, or in other words, film cameras, so not digital cameras, like the one shown, light from subject passes from the subject passes through the lens and makes an image on the film. The image and subject are always in proportion, okay? Are always in proportion. The same way that everything that you see in front of you actually gets projected onto your lens behind uh, in your eyeballs upside down and your brain flips it. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Like for example, if you if you were to look on YouTube of an eye exam, whenever the doctor would be sticking his or her um, like light in your eye, you would be able to see the doctor's like shoulders and head and where the light is upside down. So it's like this. I still have a hard time comprehending the fact that the way that light comes through my eyeballs is actually upside down in my retina. Okay. For example, here's a nice lady looking angry with her arms folded. And you can't really tell this, but here's... Here's her upside down. That's her hair at the bottom. Okay, they could have probably given her different shoes or maybe not made her white. So you can actually see where her legs are. Um, had a word pants. So we have her upside down in that picture in the camera lens. Okay? So that's how it is. And then I made this. So here's a situation that represents what it would be like or how your eyeballs see. Uh, there. How your eyeballs see. So we have a proportion here. We know how big we know how big that image is on the back of your retina, we'll say. Okay, since it's squared. Um, let's say it's 55 millimeters away from where the lens is, and the lens is right here. 55 millimeter, 50 millimeters away is where the lens is, and we know that this distance here is 100 meters away from the actual image. Okay, does that picture make sense? Did I find one and add to it that makes enough sense? Okay. 
So now what we are going to do is we would set this up so we can find out how big this tree is. We're not going to because ain't nobody got time for that because I want to get through the next one as well. So we are going to set it up the same way that it's listed here. We have the image size, the subject size. So we could just have the left side of it called size. And if you can't hold on to a writing utensil without dropping it, don't hold on to it. Just write and place it down. We have size and we have what's the uh, one on the right? Yeah, lens distance. Size and lens distance. Whoa. There. Size and lens distance. Proportion, proportion, proportion. So the size of the image is how big? The image. 35 millimeters. And that is in relation to what? What do we know? Distance from... It's, it's right there, guys. It's, you, you realize that this, I'm literally asking you to tell me what's here? Thank you. Distance from lens. Lens to image is 50 millimeters. Then we have, on the lower left, object size. Does it show how tall the tree is? No. no. So IDK, which is X. So we're looking for that distance there. Then we also have one final thing, subject distance from the lens, and that's 100 meters. And I left that as meters because I want you to notice something. Sometimes there's going to be different units of length. For every one meter, there's a thousand millimeters. So it'll be like that. Okay? So that sets that up. And you guys would know how to cross multiply or get the cross products. I'll go ahead and do it again just so you know what we would do to find X. Okay, that's how that would be set up. All the other classes had to smith that one. But you guys got the actual pictures. They didn't have any pictures here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I didn't want to short them, though, and also I want to make sure it's on YouTube so they can see what they want. Okay. The amount of paint needed to paint a surface is directly proportional to the area of that surface. If one quart of paint is needed to paint a square that is two feet on one side, how many quarts must be purchased? in order for, to paint a square that is three feet and six inches. It's six inches. I'm going to have you do that one as I'm passing out the homework, but I will tell you... There you go. See how you do with it. That's the setup. And YouTube... You look beautiful today. Thanks. You guys aren't YouTube. You're my students. 